As you watch this segment, think about how the different species of the Galapagos Islands provide evidence to support the theory of evolution. The 13 large Galapagos Islands formed three to five million years ago when undersea volcanoes created an island chain 960 kilometers from any other land. The organisms that flew, floated, or otherwise made their way to these islands were isolated. Over millions of years, these organisms adapted to their unique island environment differently than the species back on the mainland. In 1831, 22-year-old biologist Charles Darwin and the crew of the HMS Beagle set sail from England on what would become a five-year expedition around the world. When they reached the Galapagos in 1835, the unique creatures they found there fueled Darwin's scientific curiosity. Darwin found many species he had never seen before. He also noticed differences within the Galapagos species from one island to the next, such as tortoises with different types of shells and finches with different types of beaks. Darwin made detailed notes and sketches of the species he encountered and collected thousands of specimens. When he returned to England, he spent the next 20 years analyzing and interpreting his findings and doing further research in biology and geology. Finally, in 1859, he presented his groundbreaking hypothesis. In The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, Darwin put forth a controversial argument for his day that all species changed over time or evolved. Darwin argued that species change over time and as a result become adapted to their environments. For example, the blue feet of this booby are an adaptation. Females are attracted to males with bright blue feet, so the males with this adaptation are more likely to reproduce and pass this trait on to their offspring. Likewise, if an adaptation gives an organism a competitive advantage over others of its kind, such as strong legs for swimming and diving here on Galapagos, that organism is more likely to survive and pass the trait on to the next generation. Over time, these beneficial adaptations can build up in isolated populations, like those of the Galapagos, and may give rise to a new species. Galapagos's marine iguana provides compelling evidence for Darwin's ideas. It's believed that the ancestors of marine iguanas were originally land iguanas that may have come to the islands on floating logs. But food on these volcanic islands was scarce. During the competition for food, some iguanas found success by venturing into the waters. The land iguanas with slightly better tails for swimming or shorter snouts for eating off of rocks had an advantage over iguanas without these traits. Darwin argued that over millions of years, the iguanas with physical traits that made them good divers had a better chance of surviving and therefore of producing more offspring. Over the generations, a greater percentage of iguanas inherited these beneficial traits. Eventually, the marine iguanas evolved into a separate species from the land iguanas. Darwin called this process natural selection. Organisms with beneficial adaptations were effectively selected by nature to have a better chance of either surviving in their current habitat or occupying a new habitat. Darwin found creatures with unique adaptations all across the Galapagos, and modern researchers continue to find them. 